What's up, Keeps and Pirates, and welcome to Nom Pen. If you know a little about Cambodian history, you might wonder why there's such an upbeat, such an uplifting beginning to this video. You will understand when you watch the full video. For the rest of you, I'd like to say that there are a few things I will say and explain that might be hard to take or heavy to digest. I still have problems comprehending all this and I kind of tried my best to put it in this video hoping that you will get something out of it and that about the history you will hear you maybe find one more reason to visit this beautiful country and that being said I want you to know that there's probably no better place to get to know more about the history of Cambodia than Phnom Penh Pearl of Asia the former nickname of the Cambodian capital home to magnificent memories of a flourishing developing culture at the same time conserves two places which hold reminiscence to a traumatic and cruel past. Since the ancient times, Cambodia has been through a lot. Pai and Vietnamese came to conquer the country, the French colonized it, and the Americans bombed it. Even after all of this, the Khmer still found their way to shine, not knowing that the worst was yet to come. The Khmer Rouge. In 1975, the regime of Pol Pot took over the country, chasing people out of their homes, off to the farmlands, where everyone who was not a soldier had to be a peasant. Whoever held education or established a modern job was re-educated to serve the regime or killed. If everyone would work as a simple farmer with simple lives, forbidden to make selfish decisions, to have desire or preferences, Cambodia would flourish and grow strong. The ultimate plan, the perfect system, did not work. Pol Pot concluded that there could only be one reason. Driven by paranoia, unimaginable cruelty followed. The Toolslang Genocide Museum was a former high school, one of the places all over Cambodia that was turned into a prison and killing center. They called it S21. People here were tortured and the only way to stop torture was to confess. Yet, most people did not even know why they were brought here. One of the survivors states, torture happening in the most gruesome ways at least three times a day. Almost 6,000 photographs of the museum document not only who was imprisoned, but also under which circumstances they died. Between 16 and 20,000 people have been imprisoned here. Only seven survived. Outside the city center, the Chung Ek killing fields can be found. One of at least 20,000 places where people were transported in masses to be killed one after the other. People weren't shot. Bullets were too expensive. They were beaten with a pole or hit by an axe. Their throats were sliced with a knife or to save resources with the sharp edges of a sugar palm branch. Children and infants were smashed against a tree. Up to 300 people a day were executed in these fields. The remains of almost 9,000 people were found here, and 5,000 skulls remain in a Buddhist stupa, a reminder of the bitter past. In the four years that the Khmer Rouge regime lasted, it is estimated that nearly or even over Two million people were murdered, about one quarter of the population.
Before coming to Phnom Penh, on our last day in Kampot, we went to a dancing act of Epic Arts, an organization empowering and embracing the creativity of disabled people. The piece recaptures Cambodia's history, dancing through ancient times, the good old days, and the recent traumatic past, concluding that a new time is on the rise. A time of recovery, rebuilding, and reshaping. The piece is called Come Back Brighter. And I truly, truly wish for this country and its people to come back brighter.